All right, what is going on guys? It is Benny and today I have a mortar guide for you guys that goes over all of the basics that you need to know no matter what mortar deck you're playing. Now feel free to use the timestamps down below to find the spot that is most important to you that might help you the most. We do also do a live match to tie all of the advice and tips I give you guys in at the end. So feel free to check that out and next video I will do a mortar bait matchup guide so you can kind of see how to beat every single meta deck that you might go up against. So if you are looking forward to that, please subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you guys like this and I hope you enjoy so let's go right ahead and get into it all right so first thing that you need to have down is your mortar placement and so when you're going for an offensive mortar you want to have the mortar right here at the bridge one tile back either in the middle or one to the right when you play it one to the right it's a little bit harder for them to kite your mortar but the reality is this is the best placement that you want your mortar and i see a lot of people making a mistake where they play the mortar right here in the middle now the reason why this is a mistake is if you watch here and i play the mortar in the middle and then the opponent counters with something as simple as bats, my towers aren't going to attack the bats. So it's really hard to defend my mortar from that position. Even just to put it into perspective, if you play the mortar in the middle here, you can see that they can play a card virtually anywhere to cut your mortar. Whereas if you play it right here on the bridge or one to the right, there's less space that they have to kite the mortar. And if I go for the exact same mortar along the bridge here and then the opponent plays bats, you can just watch here and see that my tower pretty much takes out the bats and my mortar will survive with about half HP. So you can imagine that it's probably a lot easier to defend your mortar as long as you have the tower support here versus here. Now the exception to this rule is if they have a card that targets your mortar. So you can see here I can play my mortar more to the middle and his E giant is forced to walk around and then I can play my little prince to help defend and my mortar will fire on the tower that I was getting down damage on. This is a strategy I almost always use, but you need to make sure you're using it properly. If you use this wrong, you're going to lose the game, but if you use it right, you can win some really clutch matchups and even beat some hard counters. You can even use this strategy against Golem sometimes to pull the Golem in towards your mortar and then get a shot on the Night Witch and then pull everything in to get amazing fireball value. This same rule applies for cards like Hog Rider, where you can play your mortar a little bit into the middle to pull the Hog Rider, or cards like Giant or Goblin Giant. So just to be clear, 90% of the time your mortar should be at the bridge in this position and the other 10% of the time is when you're playing it in the middle and you're trying to pull a card that specifically targets buildings because you want to get an offensive shot off while defending. Alright so now we know how to do an offensive mortar but how do we place a defensive mortar? The most important thing when you're playing a defensive mortar is making sure that you have the mortar in the middle either on the left side or the right side. From my personal preference I like to play my mortar opposite to the lane that they're pushing. So for example if the opponent was to play a goblin giant in the back just like this to start a slow push I'm going to play my mortar in the middle and one to the right. And you'll see here now that the goblin giant has to walk a little bit further and that allows both towers to fire and it's a really easy defense and I can imagine that a lot of people probably face goblin giant so this is probably the best way to defend it. When you're playing a card like balloon, playing a defensive mortar gets a little bit more tricky because you can play a defensive mortar like here in the middle like I just did. You can also play a defensive mortar up high just like this to pull the balloon towards your little prince or whatever your air targeting card is. It really just depends how the balloon is going in the push. You can see here I wanted the balloon to be in front of the Lava Hound so I play the High Mortar to defend it. Alright, so now that we have the placement down, how do you know when to go for an offensive mortar just like this versus a defensive mortar like this? There's a couple different ways that you can look at answering this question, but I think the easiest way to understand it is going to be looking at it from a counter push point of view. So you'll see here he plays his e-golem, I'm not really sure why he did it or why he played that low level, but I can play my little prince to defend. And I see here he did a push, now I have my little prince ready to go towards the bridge and so I can go for a mortar and then I can play my knight in front. And that's kind of the three card cycle that you want to have when you're playing your mortar most of the time, is a tank in front, a ranged card behind, and the mortar in the middle. And you'll see here I'm able to get quite a bit of damage on this guy's tower simply because of the timing of defending first counter pushing with an offensive mortar and having the right cards in cycle. You don't want to mess this up by playing your mortar at the wrong time or not having the proper support cards in rotation and you also don't want to play an offensive mortar into their push. Now this push is pretty much the same in every single mortar deck. You can see here I'm using 2.9 mortar cycle and I'm using my ice wizard in the back as my ranged unit and my knight in front to tank to give me a lot of damage. You can also be a little bit more aggressive with your mortar play style where you play the mortar and then you add your support cards after as needed. So for example you you could play your mortar and then predict a building placement that they might do but personally i don't do this very often because i do find it a pretty difficult way to get damage sometimes typically you want to be doing this play style when you know that they're low on elixir and that you can kind of keep them on their toes now anytime your opponent is starting a slow push you want to play that defensive mortar because the reality is with mortar you aren't going to go band for band or tower for tower with them 
you'll see here I have the defensive mortar and then you can just very easily defend and the good thing about this as well is the defensive mortar can help damage some of the troops behind their main push. When you're playing a defensive mortar the question you should always be asking yourself is how is this defensive mortar going to stop this push because I see a lot of people play a defensive mortar at a bad time. You'll see against this guy he played the giant so I knew that it would be really good to play a defensive mortar to pull the giant away from my tower, defend the graveyard and that way I don't take as much damage. Now going back to what we were talking about before you need to have a goal in mind when you're playing a defensive mortar it has to have a purpose if you look at a card like pekka which has a lot of hp and it doesn't need a building to be pulled like giant it doesn't really make sense to play a defensive mortar because the mortar isn't going to do very much damage to it and the mortar isn't necessary to pull the card and instead you could just be playing your normal counters to cut pekka or your normal pulling cards and getting a lot more value out of your defense and having a counter push in comparison if you're playing a deck like fireball bait where they have barbarians goblin gang or you know kind of lower HP cards, then playing a defensive mortar can give you a ton of value and it's really easy to defend and you can make a lot out of that. Just to summarize that, you want to be playing a defensive mortar when it's going to give you a lot of value either pulling or taking out troops that it can actually make meaningful damage to. Alright, so now that we have everything down, let's go ahead and do a live match and try to tie everything together. So first play, we can go for a mortar because we're a little bit reckless, who cares, whatever. He's going to play a Valkyrie, so I'm just going to wait. I don't want to spam and over defend my mortar, in fact he played so much elixir to counter my mortar that we're in a pretty good position here. I'm going to play my spear goblins right here. They kind of act like a little prince, but they do a little bit less damage, obviously. But it's a good, really good way to get some support onto, you know, your knight on the defense. And then we can even counter push using our skeleton barrel. And we're already almost back at the mortar. He's going to play a defensive poison. So that means we can play our little prince safely, which is very nice. So let's just kind of wait. And then let's little prince in the back. And this is our go-to push that we're building. We're starting our little prince in the back. And then we'll mortar at the bridge once he gets a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and mortar. And then just to be safe, we will cycle our spear goblins and now we're back to our knight and so let's let that mega knight jump real quick and instead of playing our knight we are going to use our little prince ability it just might help out a little bit better and we can use our knight to defend if needed and we also did catch that archer which is nice and he has to use his arrows so let's go ahead and play our knight right here and then let's wait a second to see if he plays anything else if needed we can surround it with the goblin gang but i think we'll be okay and then we just want to wait now we don't really want to worry about that one archer there if we want to cycle we can just play our skeleton barrel here and we have our evil mortar and we don't have our little prince in rotation. We have them in one cycle. So what we can do is we can use our log to defend this e-wiz or cycle. So I think I might actually just wait. I don't really want to use it. I'm going to split my goblin gang in the back here. Just a little bit safer than using your log. And then let's just wait. And we know he has poison, so we have to be careful doing a slow push. All that really means is he, if he has poison is we can start a slow push, but we don't want to play our mortar into the poison. So if he does end up poisoning, we aren't going to play our mortar right away. There's the poison. Let's pull that Valkyrie using our Spear Goblins. And then let's just kind of wait a tiny bit for that poison to get down. And we can play it now. We might take one tick of damage. And let's go for a Skeleton Barrel in front of it. He's going to go for the Mega Knight, and that is okay because we have our Evo Knight. And we can f go ahead and fireball these evil archers just to kind of get rid of them. We don't want to risk anything. Then let's play our evil knight right in front of the mortar. And then we can play our little prince behind. He's going to go for a balloon. And we're just going to wait a second. And then we will pull the balloon using our mortar again. Exactly like how we demonstrated before earlier in the video. And that is going to be a very easy defense. And we have some nice damage here. Now remember guys, you don't want to go super aggressive and you know ruin everything. So don't be start spamming as soon as you have that damage or panicking or anything. I just played my... Um, skeleton barrel just to kind of cycle I'm gonna play my goblin gang opposite lane because he has the Valkyrie there already and I do need to start cycling let's go ahead and little prince in the back here and then let's play our knight up high again we're gonna pull that balloon exactly so and remember we're paying playing the knight to the side a little bit so that the knight pulls the lumberjack away from the balloon and that way not everything just goes directly on the mortar and stops our counter now we can play our goblin gang for this e-wiz and let's go for a skeleton barrel again and we are back to our evil mortar he played a defensive poison i'm gonna go for the evil mortar nothing in front we're gonna play a little bit more reactionary here he's gonna play his archers in a really bad position and then uh let's just wait a second and then we can play our knight in front he's gonna go for a balloon we can play our little prince right here but we will get an evil mortar shot and then we're gonna wait and see if we need to fireball i'm not sure if we'll need to or not looks like we're okay remember you want to kind of save using your fireball unless you have to because if you can get away with not using it it's a pretty good change but you see there our little prince stayed alive quite a while because we had him so up high and that allows us to get another mortar down and he's going to go for the evil archers i'm just going to fireball them i'm not really worried about fireball cycling quite yet because it's more risky 
than anything, especially because we might need our fireball against the balloon. He's going to start up a slow push using the lumberjack, and so we're just going to little prince in the back here. If he poisons, that's okay, because that just means that's four elixir that he can't use in his push. Then we can play the knight here, and now we should be able to start to spell cycle. Let's go ahead and fireball, and then let's go ahead and log, and also play our skeleton barrel, because now he has to counter the skeleton barrel if he wants to do anything. And then we can just log, and that is going to be a good game. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I do hope that this helped you guys out with playing Mortar, and I will do a Mortar matchup guide next. So I will see you guys in the next one.